2, they're going to redo Red Alert, and Red Alert 2. And Tim Curry is in Red Alert 2. That's going to go back in time with Einstein. Nonetheless, outside of the confusion surrounding the game's authorship, Let Generals 2 seem to hold a lot of promise for the downtrodden series. Base building, resource management, and many other features that had been absent from Tiberian Twilight were back. With Victory's general manager, John Van Canningham of Might and Magic fame, stressing to GameSpot that Generals 2, quote, is a return to the roots of poor Command & Conquer gameplay. Fan favorite mechanics unique to the original Generals and its expansion, such as Zero Hour's Generals system, whereby selecting a specific General to embody would give players unique benefits and drawbacks on the field, would likely see a return. In addition, the game would be running on EA's newly minted Frostbite 2 engine, allowing for Generals 2 to feature a level of graphical fidelity and environmental destruction previously unseen in the series. While fans had reason to be apprehensive of Generals 2, what little information was available on the title suggested, at the very least, that BioWare Victory was taking steps to overcome the mistakes made during the development of Tiberian Twilight and do right by the franchise. And with the release window of 2013, they had plenty of time to do so. That is, until everything changed. Oh. We decided to make uh, Command & Conquer a free-to-play game. You know, it was definitely a big shift for Fuck us. Fuck that free-to-play shit. What it really came down to is Command & Conquer is ultimately, it's a strategy game. It's a tactical combat game. You know, th this oh, game are going to be a, a live that service. The way gaming uh, was know, starting it's to go. online, and so like you know, iPhones, part of the reason and, that we're we're scaling up the number of people that are in the game is, is to everybody was making you know, sure that free to play the games. scalability is there. You know, or they only cost the buck ninety nine. Right, so that you would buy a bunch of buy them. Like mom and dads could give their kids twenty bucks, and I have to spend sixty, seventy, eighty dollars on some game. And so everybody was trying to take this free to play action. So it took a little bit of courage, but at the end of the day, we. Games like Simpsons tapped out and shit like that made bank on cell phones. After close to a year of silence following the game's unveiling, uh, like yeah, like yeah, parents would put their fucking credit card in there and totally forget or so get a phone bill for four. No, dude, Scott. Listen, this listen, Scott got a phone bill for $1,700. Oh, no. I was like, no way. He said, bro, my kid bought donuts on, the on that fucking Simpsons it. game. I was like, I was like, yeah, you were always bragging to me how far ahead of you were. He's like, yeah, dude, once in a while, I would while buy the donuts and then my kids would play, and I thought they would just be putting a lot of time in. He said, bro, they would buy them at $100 for the whatever pack of the best at a time, bro. Wars, the Old Republic would be going free to play as well. And then charge and it the to the phone that, bill. Right. When my mom, CEO, Peter sister Ward, moved up north, and I was like, you know, my sister needs cell phone. That like the she's entire walking video the roads and shit up there, the free you know, to play model there's within nothing the next from five to ten years. I was Command like, she needs a cell phone. She was just starting high school, and, into, and, uh, and all free to play future. So the guy has a cell phone, and Grandma's like, this ship, yeah, the game would no longer be three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars a month. With and I'm like, I'm well, you know, you did get your first bill, and then you usually, you know, she's like, no, man, it's been like this for like six months in a row, and I'm like, what? Let me look at that shit, and I'm looking over, going. What the fuck is this Fans shit? You know, like farm, farm Val, what is all this shit? Yeah, it's not even that serious. What is this shit? Who's playing this? It's not my grandma. She doesn't know how to use the phone. It's not my mom. It was cause for concern. It's my sister. Even if the new title fixed much of the mechanical issues that beleaguered Tiberian Twilight, it would be a waste if it lacked a strong campaign in which the player would be given the opportunity to take advantage of it. Yeah, and nobody thinks about it because you're like, oh, it's just two bucks. Oh, it's just, you know, I'm $2.99. Or whatever. And then, yeah, exactly. You forget about that over a course the title would be receiving single-player content day, after all, you know? affirming, as Canigam had previously stated, that they were intently listening to fan feedback, but offered no further details. And shortly afterwards, in November, Victory would announce that it was reverting to being titled Victory Games, dropping its Bioware branding. The message was clear. The new Command & Conquer game might eventually get single-player content, but it was no longer a prime focus the way it once was when EA first announced Generals 2. Later that month, Command & Conquer fan site CNC Saga would come into possession of a series of storyboards, believed to have been drawn for what would have been Generals 2's pre-rendered cutscenes prior to it becoming a free-to-play game. While basic, the storyboards nonetheless possess a fleeting resemblance to the visual style and energy seen in Bioware Edmonton's own epics, making for an interesting trip into what could have been. As we agreed, 
I surrender my sword in exchange for the city, for the lives of my men. They should spare you a leg of disgrace. Alright, so what are you doing now? Uh, now, I'm just trying to set up. Like, so, a lot of people, you know, unless you know what you're doing, the virtual machines. host a community machines. summit for the new Command and Conquer, when inviting prominent install, members of the franchise's you know, online community an opportunity to play the title like for the first time and offer their feedback. Like, they found that the game had significant flaws in need of smoothing drivers. over, and the lack of any sort of emphasis on a, a single-player campaign card, remained a nearly universal sticking point with the community. But the team working on the title was passionate about it, open to criticism, and apparently not very fond of the game's move to free-to-play themselves. Likewise, when members of the video game press would get their hands on the title in February of the following year, impressions were cautiously optimistic. Many continued to express concern as to whether the title would be able to balance its new financial model with its desire to be a competitive experience once it properly launched. But what was there seemed promising at the time, with many praising the game's onslaught mode, a cooperative multiplayer mode that pitted two players against waves of enemies that. controlled by AI. We got time, we'll throw However, when the community would receive the opportunity to play the game's alpha and, preview and several and months later, you, like, they found like, that many of the same issues that they had previously identified with the game like, were still the present and accounted so for. Victory was as passionate as ever about their work, go, but progress on their game seemed to stand still. Public opinions would continue to sour throughout the rest of 2013, as more and more players entered the game's closed alpha and two found themselves confronted with its many unresolved issues. The game continued to truck ahead, making the rounds at E3 in June with a stylish new trailer that showcased the game's playable generals, and at Gamescom in August with a trailer that teased the game's long-promised single-player content. But try as it might, Victory could do little more than march forward into oblivion. EA found another way to make themselves unpopular, unpopularer this week by cancelling the free-to-play Command and Conquer game and closing the studio that were developing it, Victory Games. The publisher has said they're going to try to help the devs find positions within EA, but that after receiving feedback on the alpha trial, they realised they were not making the game that fans were after. EA said they wanted to make the best game possible and that is not what they're involved in. On October 25th, Victory would lay out their plans for the future of Command & Conquer. After close to a year of testing the game's alpha with the Command & Conquer community, Victory announced that the game would receive a massive patch based on player feedback the following week, enter closed beta the following month, and then formally launch in four months in February of 2014. But then, on October 29th, the same day that Victory intended to roll out their latest update, EA would abruptly close Victory Games, canceling their nascent free-to-play title just alongside it. Them. In a statement released in the wake of the game's EA cancellation, Victory would claim that they had personally decided to cease production on the title because, quote, we shifted the game away from campaign mode and built an economy-based multiplayer experience. Your feedback from the alpha trial is clear. We are not making the game you want to play. However, a day later, a post on the forum for the game's alpha by a developer known only as EA Baylor would claim that this was a lie, stating, quote, It was not any feedback from the Alpha that shut this project down, but just petty corporate politics and shenanigans. This statement would be followed up shortly afterwards by Command & Conquer community manager Eric Krauss, who claimed that while the title absolutely had its share of problems, the decision to cancel the project came from EA, and that, quote, There are many sides to the story of why exactly they decided to do so. Command & Conquer would see a final brief flicker of life in November of 2013, when an update on EA's support website claimed that the publisher would be offering people that purchased the CNC Ultimate Collection early access to a new beta on a later date, once production of the game resumes under a new studio. However, it nothing would come it. of this. In 2017, former yes. Victory Games EA developer man. John Lamata would delve like deeply into the game's the troubled awesome development games on Reddit. He claimed that of the game's many issues, his developers, and, and, and true to fans' EA's concerns, made some of the most struggled the most to find a happy said, medium between no, making their game we don't want to see this go any further. And like, incentivizing players to continuously purchase well, advantageous it's not even that. It's like, to make it financially viable. Um, this Along with the like certain to movie studios do this too, right? Say the movie the cost eighty million, they make one sixty, but they project it three twenty. The movie's a failure, and they they like fucking scrap any sequels. And, and it's like, but it made money, right? Beautiful and right. incredibly detailed. It also obfuscated the game's and, design, yeah, it, making it difficult for players to quickly and accurately survey everything that was on the battlefield. 
Enemy units obscured by shadows or debris, for example, would effectively be invisible without squinting. However, echoing Baylor and Krauss, he would also affirm that the game's cancellation ultimately happened not as a result of any specific issue it faced, but as a result of corporate shuffling within EA. The leadership that terminated the project, he argued, was likely unaware of any of the issues that beleaguered it. We believe that Man and Conqueror has a core essence to it that will live on, hopefully, well into the next 10, 20, 30 years. Um, you know, there's something about this genre, real-time strategy, and something about this franchise, Command and Conquer, that really, uh, already for 17 years, has kept players in the game. Victory Games wanted nothing more than to do the Command and Conquer franchise proud. But the nature of their game's development meant that they were never given the opportunity to do so. Generals 2's abrupt switch from a narrative-driven Command and Conquer experience attempting to channel Bioware's spirit to a free-to-play service focused primarily on multiplayer muddled Victory's development timeline, created a host of new developmental issues, and scorned much of the series faithful. The statement released in the wake of the game's cancellation may have been disingenuous as to the actual reasons why it was canceled, but it wasn't entirely wrong. As much as Victory had tried to make do with what they had, the time and circumstances afforded to the developers made it impossible for them to deliver the game that fans of the Command and Conquer franchise wanted. Sad face, right? I had a sad face, yeah. Alright, I'm gonna reboot, completely shut down the PlayStation this time. And reboot it and see if that doesn't fix it. Yes, you're on camera. I see the smoke. Holy shit. <laughs> that 70s show basement and shit. <laughs> I've had this pipe a long time. Like, 10 years. <laughs> okay, rebooting. So now is it running? Yes, I got it running. I mean, we still got to do things to it. Like you still have to have update it. You know, um, sometimes Windows updates doesn't like virtual machines. I don't know if it's just my computer or what it is, but I mean, so it's still. This is like bare minimum. You know, there's no bloatware, no net bullshit on it. I mean, you can boot, like, ISO images. You can boot them because you don't have a virtual, you know, you don't have a disk drive. You can still boot that. That's what I did. That's how I booted the, uh... Right. I use Magic ISO or whatever. Right. I use Ultra ISO. Well, it's the same thing. Right. It's a, <laughs> it's just a virtual mounting software program. computer and then uh, you know it, it would you, you could assign the so you can't like share the drive you can't share the drive with both systems at the same time simultaneously like, people seem to have this misconception that like, like, computers work like that and they don't you can uh, you have to shut down the system you can start the menu but you just it looks right now, it looks like there's two start menus because they're on. I don't have any full screen. Usually, when I'm in the virtual machine, I'll just make it full screen. That's not the full Okay. So, up here, there's these different, like, and then if you click on, like, here's your sidebar, you can turn that on and off. That's like where your virtual machine you can select what virtual machine you want. And then the one that's a square within a square, that makes it full screen. Okay, and I kind of close away. Boom. Looks like, you know, can't really, can't really, hold on. 
can't, besides the little line on top, you can't tell that this is a virtual machine versus a physical machine. I shut it down, I can go online. It can get viruses, it can get Bitcoin locker or whatever, cryptocurrency, you know. That's why it's nice to have, especially when you surf the internet like you do. You never know what you're going to come across. Uh, But it'll, it'll appear as if you now have two computers in the house, essentially. So, you want to have VPN, VPN on that computer. And then that computer will, once the VPN's enabled, be like your portable wherever in the world you want to be. For, for torrenting or whatever. That way, when you're trying to order a pizza, you know, pizza cut, it doesn't look like you're ordering it from Moscow or Luxembourg or what the fuck ever. Right. Or when you're checking your Gmail, you may start running into things like that because, you know, your phone is a security token. Your phone has so many things that, you know, you lo your location, GPS and all that stuff act is, is helps dictate whether or not a malicious attempt is being broken into based on history, your phone's history. Where were you last when you logged in your Gmail? Where were you? That, that's how your phone works. That's how the system works. And so if you suddenly log in your Gmail from Finland, Switzerland, what the fuck ever, France, it's it's going to red flag in the system. You uh, pop the disc oh. in and back in. Uh, back sure. in. So... That's why having a VPN on a separate computer or just, you know, a device of its own is what you want. You don't want to have it on, like, whatever you're going to be checking your email on unless that's what you're going to check email on all the time type of shit. So, uh, you'll, come, you'll, you'll come over to... You can have it, if, if you like, I can set it up to auto-load. I don't recommend it. That way you have a little more control over it. You know when it's running and when it's not running. The whole virtual machine as a whole. You know, you just come over to the little VM workstation. Double click it. And you, you know, if it shows up like this, it says power on, that means it's off. I'll go over to it, hit power on. Give it a few moments, if a little box pops up, usually something, you know, like this thing, it says a specified path can be found, that's because it was looking for the, the, uh, the virtual, the disk of Windows that I, was the, uh, the ultra, the ISO that I was using. And then as soon as Windows loads, I just come over here, hit the little full screen button. There's no password, that way it just logs in right away. You can create a password if you wish, but it's not really necessary. I don't think it is. And then you, just still, you still want to give it a few minutes to do its loading, your mouse is flickering, and the hourglass is loading, it's doing its good. But other than that, Windows Firewall does run, it's running all the Windows Defenders running, like that type of shit.
install the wood dryer, so you shouldn't have any issues opening up and checking that out. That little box that pops up and you always have to say yes or no, it's annoying. But it kind of like prevents viruses and shit from automatically installing. Yeah, I don't know. What? You don't know why? I don't know why it won't... The game won't install? Right. Not even on the external. Work. Is there a flash drive laying anywhere around there? I lost my flash drive. It's gotta be around here somewhere. My cloud wasn't as big as your cloud. <laughs> it has to do with the fiber too. No, I just think I packed my shit bad. Like I said, I need a grinder. You remember that game, Mini Ninjas? It was no Mini Ninjas game? Yeah. Alright, that's gonna take 50 minutes. <coughs> mini, 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 mini Ninjas. Gold free to play days. Yeah, there's a couple games. When does the next ones change, right? Six, right? April 6th usually on PlayStation? No. Oh, I, um, I thought you said it was like the 12th or something. Oh. The 6th, really? Mm <laughs> Do you remember these? What BGs? Maybe 
describe it? Direct. Is it well, easier? Well, see, look. Oh, fucking what you call it? Um, um, I can't remember. Joe Cartoon. Joe Cartoon. What up? Who's the man? Who's the man? Oh, man. Wasted. Hammer. He's just peed on the fuck. He's my dog. Oh, my dog. What up? Gotta go pee. Gotta go pee. Oh, yeah. Be a man in it. Stupid. Yeah. What up? Who's the man? Who's the man? Who's the driver? Oh, my freaking head. I'm so lazy. Yo, 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 yo. Check this out. What's up? Do something about it, city boy. What's up? Shut the eyeball. Hang on, baby. Michael Jordan. Yeah. Michael Jordan. 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 I'm so <laughs> These are so dumb. <laughs> monkey looker? Oh, remember monkey looker? Or what? Steroids can monkey. really damage your body. They can cause tendons to tear and bones to stop growing. Damage kidneys, destroy the liver, even cause heart attacks and strokes. Not to. I was gonna say, what the fuck? Why is there an actual commercial in front of us? My monkey, and you're gonna watch me spank my monkey. Yeah, because you're a monkey lover. Yeah, you are, you monkey lover. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you like that. Monkey. You like looking at my monkey. Yeah, you like it when I spank my monkey. I know you do. Tell me you like my monkey. Say I like your monkey. Are you looking at my monkey? You best be looking at my monkey. Look at my monkey. Yeah, look at my monkey. I'm beating my monkey. You look at my monkey, you look at my monkey, you want my monkey, don't you? You know you do, you monkey lover, monkey lover. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, that's it, that's it. Oh yeah, 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 I know what you're thinking. You want to see this man's testicles? That's right. Uh, big old bouncy testicles. Nice. Big old bouncy airy testicles. That's right. A closer look. Not very pretty, is it? Wanker. Wow. Let me shut this down quick and then uh, These did not age well. Put a close uh, close the case up and then be on my way because it's after nine. <gasps> but all you gotta do is just log in and then log into VPN. I got all I got BitTorrent already installed, so you're good there. Um, and then stop using BitTorrent in on the host machine. And then I'll show you. I'll we'll ha I'll have you install log in the VPN thingy quick so that I can turn the kill switch on. And then. Uh, and then I'll sh you know I'll just show you quick where it gets installed. Let's see. Let's see. I need to post that. You, you ever seen Train to Busan? Mm -hmm. uh, they're making a sequel to it. Uh, they made, Okay, so 
Train to Busan, really, really fucking good uh, zombie movie, if you like zombie films, about people stuck on a train, right? Uh, like one of those bullet trains in Korea. Okay. Um, they made a anime prequel to it called Soul Station, right? But like spelled like Seoul, Korea, right? Um, yes, and now they're making a sequel called Peninsula. And they post the trailer came out like uh, a couple days ago or so. And uh, it looks dope. Here, I'll show you. So it's like spread over the entire Korean island. That's fine. Holy shit. That was fucking weird. This is like Dead Rising the fucking movie, bro. Just not the actual one. This shit looks dope. What's it called? Peninsula. Peninsula. It's supposed to come out in August. And you don't have to actually see the first one to understand what the fuck the... Well, you probably would want to. It's always helpful, you're saying. But they're both Korean films, so they're gonna be in... In Korean? Not yeah. the subtitle. Subtitle. Actually watch it and watch it? Yep. But it's, I'm telling you, it's really, really good. So I got this fancy little adapter on here for you. Okay. What else is coming out? Artemis Fowl? Who cares? I'm kind of upset about A Quiet Place too. I mean, like, every other movie came basically a, a on demand. On, like, Amazon Prime or whatever. Where they put the theater you know, releases. But, like, Quiet Place did not join that. They're like, no, we'll just release it at some other date. And it's like, aww. I really, I really, I mean, as much as, as much as I would love to see, you know, Black Widow in the, in the big screen, I hope that Disney just decides to Disney Plus it. It seems like they may end up doing a lot of that. I mean, how can, they can't really, I mean. Well, they could delay their films. But are they going to delay it months? Yeah, why not? I mean, James Bond, that studio delayed James Bond all the way until November. Oh, did they now? Yeah, it's it was supposed to come out this month. And same with Black Widow, right? But Black Widow, they haven't said anything, whether or not. Uh, however, they didn't delay The Eternals, which is in November as well. So, I don't know. This thing is loose. The gimbal. Oh no, there's an earthquake. We got that uh, Paul Greengrass fucking shaky cam effect for battle. Well, there's a huge difference between the different styles, but, like, no, when, when it was done in the Bourne uh, film, you know, it made sense because it was actually choreographed to be shaky. You know, it wasn't just, like, some other movies that did shaky cam where, they, where literally there's a guy just shaking the camera. 
and it, and it's bad. The Paul Greengrass one, like you notice, like uh, um, uh, and during that fight scene, like there's moments like where the hand comes out with the knife, you know, and it freeze frames almost for a second, slow motion, but then continues, and then it follows the motions of the fight, right? You like go with the punch and you come with the hits and stuff like that. And that's when it reacts, when the camera shakes a little bit. So you feel the hits, right? And you feel the energy, the tension or whatever uh, of the fight scene. Other, like when somebody's literally just shaking the fucking camera while there's people fighting. Like uh, Alex Cross did that, that movie with, uh, uh, what's his face? Uh, the dude from Lost and, and uh, Tyler Perry. That that fight scene was garbage. Hot, melty, smelly, wet, squelching garbage. And it could have been good. Although, without Morgan Freeman, I think Morgan Freeman is Alex Cross to me. If they were going to get a younger actor to do it, either Chadwick Boseman, Anthony Mackie, I think they would have been the best to pull it off. Anthony Mackie especially. I think he he has, when he does the serious roles, he has the ability to be like a young Morgan Freeman. Login with VPN so I can set this up quick so I can get going. Uh, Just gotta log in with your keep solid ID, whatever. I that, hope I was whatever that might be. That must have been correct. All right. Probably shouldn't keep the password the same for everything unless it was different. It sort of is, but isn't. Even I get mixed up between right. the five of them. <laughs> so it, it pisses me off that BitTorrent fires up right away. Like, it's not supposed to. I know. It's it's like a glitch in BitTorrent. Does it do it on on regular computer? No. Because it does it in my virtual machine, too, so it must be a glitch in a virtual machine thing. It's, I turn it off that it starts with... Oh, I even have... I even... The setting's not on. It's not checked to start with Windows, but it still starts at that's not good. No. So I just don't ever have auto. Um, it still doesn't automatically if you. Well, that's what the kill switch and shit's good for. It's supposed to prevent things from until it makes a connection. Otherwise, it just sits there with like, I don't know, I don't have too many issues. I mean, it, it'll fix a lot of issues, hopefully. All right. Uh, update. Yeah, I have like a really old version of VPN. Mine was like version 5, I think they're like an 8. And then once it's updated, I'll show you the settings. Alright, well, wait, while that's doing this thing, look, we'll play it again. Right, we look at how crazy this shit is. First of all, he, he when he gets to the staircase, was cool, but then like the multi pile one. Damn straight Korean zombies. North Korean. That was free. Oh, they can like see through the wall or what? Yeah. Like... They were packed in there. Yeah. Now wait till you get to the fighting arena here. <laughs> Did you see that shit? They were like tied together or some shit.
많이 무서웠죠. But it looks cool, right? I'm excited. I want to see it. That's my kind of jam. I guess that original, you know, the first one, Train to Basan itself, was pretty fucking good. Damn it, about 30 minutes. Basically, what I'm doing now is I'm moving every, everything off the fucking... The uh, drive? Drive onto the external. Right. Gonna uh, I'm going to copy all my captured items and shit. Real, I'm going to figure out how, but... I'm you got these that. three drives that we got. I don't know if any of them have space, but all you would have to format them to... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I was hoping I could find my flash drive. I got to look for it. Wait, wait. For, for capture, do you can't move that stuff over to... Uh, yeah, you can. It doesn't have to be formatted to a PS4 format for no, captures, just, just yeah. for games, right? I just need a flash drive, yeah. Right. I wish I could help you there. To do that real quick, and then... Um, Mine literally has, like... It probably does not have enough storage for... I need 48 gigs. No, it does. It's got, like, 12. Uh, and, I, and I have a flash drive somewhere that is uh, uh, 128. Um, that I had just used not too long ago... Uh, to move a bunch of films onto uh, Scott's fucking PlayStation 3. And I know uh, he didn't have it there, so I know I brought it home, but... There's nothing plugged in the back of the computer. Just the three hard drives. Yeah, no, no, it would have always been plugged in the front. And I know I didn't, and it's not in there. I know no, that. it wasn't in there when I got here. It's been missing for a few days, but I don't know where... It could have fell out of my pocket in the car, for all I fucking know. <laughs> How much can you get those for? It's just not... I don't know, like nine bucks. Really? 128 ones? Yeah. Oh, I have to, I have to go to the store then. And it's not bad, it's, it was 3.0. Right, that's what I'm saying, nine bucks is, it's, that's great. <laughs> it sort of produces wind. So sometimes, so I don't ever use optimal. I mean, optimal. You, if you just leave it on optimal, it should always connect. But optimal is going to change. Like, so each one of these IKEA v, IKEA version two. Spinner, I got, I got black one. <laughs> the uh, IKEA 2, you'll get good speeds. Um, but the Open VPN and Keep Solid, Keep Solid, you'll get slow speeds, but it's like more stable, if that makes sense. And WireGuard is a beta. They just started at like a month or two ago. So it's got pretty good speeds, but I, I notice it tends to drop a lot, so it's not very stable. But... For some reason, iKey version 2 is great, but it drops sometimes. It's not that it's unstable. I just, I don't think it likes torrents, iKey version 2. So, okay. if you want to make sure you're always connected, you can leave it on optimal. Um, if you want stability, but sacrificing, like, tons of speed, like, 200 meg down, you'll probably be, you'll be, it'll drop down to, like, 20 meg down. That's the difference in stability versus speed. Whereas IKEA and WireGuard will both give you like great speeds. You'll get like 70 to 150 download speed. So I mean, I guess we'll just leave it on opt optimal and see how your experiences are. Um, I have the stop DNS leak on, which was off. DNS firewall, which. No, it's something you gotta buy, okay. Kill switch is on, that was off. And then um, run on startup, which was off, and it's now on. So, um, and we don't need feedback, turn that on. So it should always be on, all right. And you shouldn't have to worry about nothing too much now. You always tell because it's solid blue over here. And then we'll change the, uh, what, where is it? Click on. 
look out the mobile service, the torrent, and I don't know. I always just like. I tend to do fucking Romania yeah, or Luxembourg. I've been doing Canada. Oh, have you? Yeah. But Canada, you can't connect to the Pirate Bay, right? You're nope. saying? But I know in Luxembourg and Romania, you can. Right, so like you're totally good, it's connected, and you should be good. So like, and, and how to test that, it's real simple. Like, I just go to, and you don't even have to run the speed test, but I just go to speedtest.net, and you'll know if you're connected through the VPN, because it'll run a speed, you can run a speed test, and it'll give you the, you know, you'll the lag, you'll notice like your, your uh, response is going to, your, um, what is it called, latency, it's going to be real high. And that's because you're connecting f way overseas, and then f overseas has to reply back. Like, obviously, there's going to be some latency. Blah, blah, blah. I don't, I, I didn't, like, um, hold on. There's a, so Edge, blah, 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 everybody hates Edge. They, they don't, they, it's because nobody knows how to, I dislike Edge, but and, I like Firefox. I know, but check it out. Extensions. I know. Don't don't get me wrong. They both have their pros and cons. Um, but Windows 10 has a store. And um, where am I? Just, uh, Windows 10 has a store. Extensions. If I just open up a store, it just opens up the general store. If I do it that way, it kind of takes me to the Edge extensions. Yep. And then just search and type in. Uh, I type. I just type in AdBlock, but I don't do the one that you probably think. I do AdGuard, the green one. That's how I know it. AdGuard, AdBlock, and AdBlock Plus. Those extensions, you still get ads on SpeedTest. SpeedTest.net is like so notorious for like making sure their ads. Punch through, man. They 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 want the money. They need the money. Whatever. And so you know, I'm notorious for finding ways of fucking that bullshit. Like, I hate having ads. I hate it. Like, bullshit ads. Trying not to get, trying to make people less rich in this world. Well, no. I mean, I understand everybody needs to make a little money, but I mean, come on. Like, look at this. This is all ads. Like everything. Only this box right here is gonna say all the shit on the side, on the shy. There's this box on the bottom. One, two, three, four. There's five. Five giant block ads. Right here, that's a giant ad right here. This is an ad, and this is an ad, an ad, an ad. Like, and who the fuck has money for a fiber laser cutting machine? You know, well, they're like starting at 1500 or, you know. Alright, so we, we go launch. Um, private browsing. I mean, yeah, Edge even has a private browsing mode, you know that? Like Firefox has private browsing. It's supposed to be incognito mode, right? Like, Blah, blah, blah. Please wait while filter database is loading, but you know what I mean. It's fine. Filter for all known analytics. Dun, dun. Allow search and self promotions. No. Uh, participate in the development vanguard filters. No. Protection against phishing malicious websites. Yes. Social media widgets. Yes. yes. You know, we reload, watch them all magically be gone. It also helps with loading time, too. Especially if loading is an issue. Like, speed is an issue. So now we're in Brazvo, Brazvo, whatever. We'll just uh, hit go and see what our speed looks like. Now, this is all encrypted. You know, this is all supposed to be encrypted. Like, you know, to a minimum, it's not like, you know, and NASA NSA 2048-bit fucking encryption. Oh, man. Okay, see, rise up, rise up. See, this is all throttled right here. And then, like, it picks up because it's like, okay, well, we don't know what this is. It's just random data. Oh, we're going to bring it down a little bit. Like, it's so probably if I change the... Well, I mean, you're also on wireless, too, and that's killing it. Yeah? Yeah. That's, like, super killing it. If there was a way that you could be hardlined into the router... Oh, 
your upload and download speed would be insane. Like, in stability and latency and sharing your stuff to the network. I don't know if you ever have issues or... So your download's 7 and your upload's 2.5. That's what you're getting through through the optimal VPN in Luxburg. That's low, isn't it? Well, yeah, no. I mean, it's it'll get what you need. It just, uh, I mean, we can change it up. Uh, what I would say is we change up the type of the server. So we go settings, protocol, and I would say just try the WireGuard. See what WireGuard gives us. We're in Romania. I'm sorry, not Luxembourg. So it says it's disconnected because it does that. And it's supposed to kill like all the settings and stuff. I and I've watched it in BitTorrent kill. So you'll you'll see the speeds dropping, 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 and nothing. Like. Right, so now it's reconnected. Fire edge back up. Like <laughs> international edition, yes. All the ink, all the settings. Think I'm over there, whatever language that is. Must update memes. Oh, I'm about to get out of here. I just want to see what the speed looks like. Still pretty, have a pretty high ping. 226 ping. But as you can see, the mega, the speed's up there like 15. It was at 13 for a second. I don't know why it's dropping back down to 6, 7. But now, now it's going back up. So it's a little higher. And I have this one on the wire guard. <coughs> see what your upload looks like. No upload? No upload at all. It's garbage. <laughs> it all has to do with these protocols, these different the different ways it connects, so we'll check out Canada. Canada seems to Canada's even worse. We'll connect to Luxembourg. I like Luxembourg. Never been there, but... I have. Any good? Sure. A lot of old buildings. A lot of castles. Interesting design. I mean, shit that you'll never see like anywhere else. Like, Alright, so it says we're connected. A lot of brick. Not like brick, but like big stone. But just like not... Recarve it, just oh, big stone. Like, oh, that's probably a, way a lot of go. fountains. Oh, I forgot to change the time, that might be affecting it too. Believe it or not, that does. Oh, that's a picture for me. Alright, um, let me change the time. No, not customizing. Just the time of day. We want to be on Central Time, even though we're not on Central Time. That kind of gives shit away, Central Time. But. I mean, the VPN, you're always going to get slower speed than what you pay for, like, compared to what you're. Internet service provider is charging them. Giving them. And that's because it's encrypted. Everything like that, you know, it's, it's going to take a lot longer. I'll try one more quick and then. I gotta get out of here, it's almost 10. Is it not con connecting? No, it is. I'm, I'm changing the protocols, and every time you change the protocol, you got to wait for it to reconnect to the server. Like, otherwise, it just takes the box and all out. Do, 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 do.
It's like nah, bro. Sometimes just like restarting the virtual machine does. Which is nice too, because like if you're playing a game or you got a bunch of tabs up or some shit on your main computer, you can restart your virtual machine. The thing with your VPN, if BitTorrent's giving you issues or just something's not, you know, you can restart the virtual machine without fucking with your main stuff. Yeah. Whatever, we'll just do it optimally. What are you adjusting now? Oh, I'm just trying to remote start the car. Remote start? Yeah, we're about to start bullshit. It doesn't fucking work ever because it keeps blocking me out of the damn app because the app's trash. Should just have a voice activated one. They do have them, um, but you have the newest ones, which is ridiculous. Just pick up your phone. Bitch, start to ride. Man. I think the VPNs are just overloaded. I haven't been on the VPNs really since the... See how it goes up and down? I mean, it's just... It's kind of throttly. It's, it's a little throttly. I think if you just try to keep all your... your, your all your torrenting traffic and shit to this... It might may start to get better after like a month or two. They may let you know if they can't see shit that you're doing after a couple months and you just you know. Because I think you're kind of being throttled. And the fact that the VPNs also might be very very. You know, it's nine forty three right now. A lot of people are home. Like a lot of people are using the internet. Pornhub. Well, that I mean, you know, <laughs> VPN is bad, but. I mean, Everybody, you download, you everybody's just, on Pornhub right you got, now. You got 10 downloads, it seems about to be the average, it's around 10 megs down, which will give you like about 900 KV. I know it's not like insanely great, but you'll get shit eventually. You just let it be on all the time. The upload's kind of shit, it's only half a meg, so it's crap for like sharing stuff, but that's kind of, I think, why they're throttling me because of the sharing stuff. Because you're not like canceling stuff right away and just sharing stuff. They don't. They don't really like torrent protocol. Like a lot of the stuff is changing to CyberLocker stuff where they can't. They can't throttle that. You know, it's like um, upload.com and openload and shit like you know like CyberLockers they call yeah, them. Mega upload and right, shit. like I mean, yeah, mega and shit. That stuff's all encrypted from end to end. Right. And and like those links are hard to find. You can't crawl for them. You, you know, people need to share them type of shit. So you have to run forums. And like this whole, like having logins to get to the forums kind of helps a little. And 
you know, there's other tricks that fucking web users use and, you know, code your links type of shit so web crawlers can't find it. And then there was also ED2K and Emule. Right, well, see, now those are different protocols. That's, they're more, that those are like, those are peer-to-peer -peer protocols, what those are. But I gotta get out of here, man. Play with it for a little bit. Um, just, yeah, don't torrent and don't use the VPN on your main host computer. Just do it through the virtual machine. I mean, and, and I got, it, it's pretty, I mean, you, you should be able to navigate it pretty well. It's not too difficult. I gotta get out of here, man. It's like time. I'll say bye to the camera. Hold on, you gotta... Bye, bye camera. <laughs> <laughs> bye camera. Where the fuck? Hold on, I'm coming. <laughs>